Heavy lift. Tomorrow I'll be, heading, I'll be heading to Uvalde, Texas, to meet with each of those families. As I speak, those parents are literally preparing to bury their children in the United States of America, to bury their children. While the country mourns at least 31 people killed in two mass shootings over a two week period, Portland is also feeling the impact of gun violence. We want to thank you for joining us here tonight at 11 o'clock. I'm Galen Etlin. Now we are going to get to an update about Texas and the gun debate in a moment, but we begin with an announcement today from Portland police about 10 people being shot in the city in a 24 hour period. Those incidents spanned Portland starting early Friday morning and lasting into the early morning hours of Saturday. Each incident has a different story from a group getting into some kind of fight to another incident where homeowners confronted people breaking into cars. You can find a full timeline and the specifics on KGW.com. In the meantime, Portland police continues to say it's spread thin. Calls like this are taking away response from other calls. And anyone with information about these shootings is asked to contact police. You can stay anonymous too and be eligible for a cash reward if you report relevant information to Crime Stoppers of Oregon. So now let's turn back to the aftermath of Tuesday's shooting in Uvalde, Texas, as survivors cling to faith to keep going. Volunteers joined efforts to help a Roman Catholic church there get ready for vigil events. One of those was a teacher at Robb Elementary School, where this massacre of 19 children and two adults took place. She says the only way to keep her students quiet during the violence was to tell them to pray. And I pray to God, please shield my door, please shield my walk, because I could hear everything happening right there. I could smell it. I could smell it. We were right there. Mm. Now, Catholic Charities Archdiocese of San Antonio is helping victims, families, and survivors by contacting counselors who dealt with the aftermath of Sandy Hook. Those volunteers were helping the church look nice ahead of an interfaith prayer service tonight. Dozens of people gathered to start that healing process, which for so many will be a lifelong journey. We find ourselves in a moment of so much anger that how could something like this happen? And it's okay, it's okay to be angry. But as you have heard me say, don't allow it to turn into hate. President Biden, as you heard at the beginning of our newscast, is traveling to Uvalde tomorrow. He's expected to visit that same church and attend mass. As the world reflects on Uvalde, Texas, Vice President Kamala Harris is remembering those killed in a racist attack in Buffalo, New York, just two weeks ago. And when we're looking at an epidemic of hate where, where, where people are being targeted just because of who they are, I think we all have to stand back and say, wait, enough. Enough is enough. A, a harm against any one of us is a harm against all of us. Vice President Harris was also in Buffalo to attend Ruth Whitfield's funeral. She and nine others were shot and killed by a teenage gunman at a grocery store on May 14th. During Whitfield's service, Vice President Harris told the public that, quote, we will not allow small people to create fear in our communities. A lot of people are talking about the gun debate, and it unexpectedly flared up at TEDx Portland today. It turns out the nonprofit may have broken federal rules. Non-affiliated Oregon gubernatorial candidate Betsy Johnson was brought onto the Moda Center stage for TEDx Portland, and she was not a previously announced guest. We do need to mention KGW is a media partner for TEDx Portland, and we did not know she would be brought up. Well, after a few questions, some in the crowd shouted for her to speak about gun control. Johnson has an A rating from the NRA, an organization that has fought most gun control measures nationwide. The style of the gun doesn't dictate the lethality. But I think... So a lot of people in the crowd were not happy to hear that after 19 children were shot and killed with an AR-15 this week. But reaction was mixed as Johnson also spoke about factors contributing to gun violence. I think that we have so divided this debate on gun, no gun, that we're losing track of some of that stuff in the middle ground. And that stuff in the middle ground is we have, by any definition, a mental health system. 
but she called on a need for more mental health services and many cheered at that. No matter the public reaction, the bigger issue here is TEDx Portland appears to have violated a federal IRS rule that prohibits tax exempt nonprofits from participating in a political campaign. The host, David Ray, said this interview was planned about two weeks ago, too. TEDx Portland released a statement after this saying, quote, having a political candidate on our stage this morning was not the right decision. We apologize for the error in judgment and distraction this moment created in what was otherwise an engaging and celebratory day. Tonight, we are learning more about a man arrested and charged this week for bias crime. Police say surveillance showed him putting up neo-Nazi propaganda outside the immigrant and refugee community organization in East Portland. Let's bring in our Alma McCarty now, who has been following this case for us. Alma, what's the deal here? Well, Galen, folks at Urco noticed this hateful sticker on the fence outside one of their buildings and reported the incident to Portland police. From there, investigators say they discovered a lot more, including the suspect's alleged connection to to local neo-Nazi groups. It's a message we've all heard before. If you see something, say something. In Northeast Portland, saying something and reporting hateful vandalism led to an arrest of a suspected white supremacist. We're just really grateful that the situation uh, turned out the way that it did. Investigators say Jarl Rockhill drove from West Lynn to the Immigrant and Refugee Community Organization in Portland to put neo-Nazi propaganda on the fence of the community center in April. Court documents reveal it was a sticker showing the image of the Iron March, a neo-Nazi white supremacist organization that advocates for lone wolf violence against Jews, immigrants, and other communities of color. That incident, along with the suspect's car and license plate, were captured on camera. Soko Iet, the director of Urco's Pacific Islander and Asian Family Center, said they let law enforcement know right away. A simple act of uh, putting a sticker onto our community center um, turned out uh, down the road to be uh, this series of events that uh, could have averted a larger incident. A month after that incident, officers pulled Rock Hill over and served a search warrant at his home. There, they found numerous rifles, handguns, and other items, not specifically linked to the criminal investigation. Investigators combed through the suspect's social media and found several sites listing him as a white supremacist and a member of a neo-Nazi group in Portland. He was arrested and charged with bias crime and criminal mischief. We want to make sure that uh, our community feels safe that our families feel safe and that our students feel safe. It said he's seen an across the board increase in hate against the Asian American Pacific Islander community, though these bias and hate crimes often go underreported. He appreciates the work law enforcement took to find, arrest, and charge the suspect. It requires a lot of community listening, community collaboration, especially with our communities of color and our communities that are immigrant refugee. Uh, you know, these incidences are an indicator that, you know, we have a lot of work to do in our community. In Northeast Portland, Alma McCarty, KGW News.